right on time. Not that I'd expect anything less. How's your day going? It's going really good. How are you? Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I love your story. I don't know how many people tell you that they love the story. Do a lot of people tell you that? Um, actually not. Not surprisingly, no. <laughs> I mean, there's so many artists that I love that the story is we trudged away for 10 years in the clubs. Uh, we tried to write the hit song. The label didn't like the hit song, blah, 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 blah. Yours is kind of like, well, I was cool with social media. I just posted a song out of nowhere. It went viral. People yeah. connected with an organic thought that I had, and here we are. Or am I missing a step or two? Sounds so easy. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of. I mean, not. I think the whole me releasing a song and it going viral was luck for sure. I mean, that's putting yourself out there and just seeing how it reacts and seeing how it does. Um, I think a lot of people don't know that like I'd been on social media and on like I'd been training and dancing since I was eight. Right. Oh, so I think that's the thing where I'd been like working as a dancer though in a totally different industry for a really long time. Um, and then, you know, when I released this song, it was not really, I wasn't really expecting it to end up anywhere. Like it wasn't like, I'm going to post this and I'm going to be discovered. Like it wasn't like that. It was, I just posted it because I wrote a literally a random song and then it just kind of went off on its own. Well, it's so refreshing because a lot of people who are songwriters for a living or part of a living, everything is just so thought out. And there you were, again, that dance background. Uh, people who follow the story will see that you posted that video because you didn't know what dancing thing or something along those lines to post that day. And I'm going to try a song. and. Yeah. How long did it take you to write that initial song? Well, so that night I recorded a dance video and I usually end dance like 10 30. Um, and so I finished it, recorded it and I got back to like edit it. Uh, and then there was like, it was so bad. Like the camera like was like, nee, 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 like really bad. So I was like, I can't, I can't post this. Um, and then I was in a really like bad mood because I wanted to post every single Friday and I was right. like, I'm gonna, you know, dedicate to this and make sure I do it. Um, so I was, went into my room, wrote a song in 20 minutes, um, and literally threw it out there. And my parents hated it. I was like, I don't even know if this is good. Like, it was just not, it was such an accident. <laughs> it wasn't really meant to be out. So, yeah. After writing something like that on a first attempt that is seen and liked and well respected and all that. Does that make you go, well, every song that I write has to be done in 20 minutes or I'm throwing it away? No, I mean, some songs come out insanely quick. Like within the first 15 minutes, they can be out. Um, when you're in co-writing sessions, there's obviously a bit of, um, you know, you, you want to push yourself. You want to make sure you're not just settling for okay lyrics. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the whole thing. You know, speed is great, but then you also want to, make sure you're making a quality song and you're really focusing on the lyrics and the story and drilling in on it. And then that's where the nine hour sessions come in where it's yeah. take forever to get out, so. Yeah, so after a song like that takes off and your parents didn't like it initially, do they eventually go, well, we were wrong? How does uh, that yeah. Well, they still, they didn't love it. Like after they listened to it about 500 times, they're like, okay, this is decent. Um, but at first they were so confused at what I was writing about, like what I was doing. Um, I didn't even know what I was doing at that point either. It was all like so DIY and out of the blue. And then I just, I think the more I released every single Friday, I kept on posting original songs, the stronger they got. Um, so they started liking my music more and more. Now, now they like it a lot better than when I first released the song. <laughs> Did you start out on piano before you started dancing or around the same time? I actually don't know how to play piano. It's, <laughs> I literally just place my fingers. I kind of had to like teach myself to figure out what sounded good. And whatever, like literally whatever sounded good to my ear, I would just put down and repeat it. Um, but I'd never, I never, piano so you just had a keyboard around you that was connected to the computer or at least could pick up on the computer yeah um 
So my grandpa gave me an, a keyboard when I was like six. So I still <laughs> have it. I haven't gotten rid of it. It's this dinky little annoying little keyboard that makes some weird noises. Um, <laughs> but I still have it and I still use it. Um, hmm. And then, you know, I just, I'd always been like a fan of writing, but uh, my songs never made sense until that first song. Did you wind up with a publishing deal before your record contract happened? Um, no, actually not. I think we really waited on that because it, that's a, that's the more people get involved, you know, you want to make sure that you're really strong on your own opinions before you get way too many people involved. And that's why I think the biggest thing was, you know, finding great managers, making mm -hmm. sure that my vision was always being, um, you know, coming to life and not being skewed anyway, anywhere else. Um, and I think the team like is still in the process of building right now. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. You're on a great record label to say the least uh, without RCA. There's no Elvis with no Elvis. There's <laughs> no Beatles uh, kind of the building blocks of, of music right there. Were there any RCA artists that you remember as a kid, hearing that they were on RCA and you went, wow, that's a label that I'm interested in. I mean, they have like Kesha, Pink, Justin Timberlake, Khalid, like SZA. They have so, like, the list literally goes on. It's, it's just such a great label and they're such good people too. That's the biggest thing. You know, we met with, we met with quite a few labels mm -hmm. and um, it was the process of going through the same, the buildings all look the same. <laughs> all, it was like, you know, it, it's all very similar. It's all about like the vibe you get from someone and if they're actually going to like take care of your songs and let you do your thing. I actually don't know this. Are you signed out of the Canadian arm of the major label or the States? The States. Okay. That's a very unique thing. Usually you sign to Warner Canada out of Toronto or Sony Canada, and then you have to deal with, uh, go, well, I understand that I'm Canadian, but I'm not a Canadian artist. You should also promote me. You signed out of the big leagues. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. You know, again, like so many of these great things, it must be a lot of people having to go, oh, most people have to do this after 15 years and you kind of got it early. Um, that's a good thing. That's the, that's the weird thing about social media now is that you can, you don't need to be, you know, discovered by someone at a random club bar and like a label head. And then there's yeah. a process of like, there's one, you know, it's, you release, you know, it's so not like it's social media has changed everything and it's not the generic way to, to release music music really um it's finding the right team and making sure that your social media supports that <laughs> right so looking ahead do you have a big 10-year plan 15-year plan for everything or have you kind of learned to let things go at their own pace that's yeah i've definitely learned to keep things <clears throat> um i never really know what's happening every week i don't know i this morning i did check like what's going on today uh, what do I have to do? And I have like a calendar that updates every single day. So I, you know, I'm just taking it week by week and um, continuing to write and making sure that I'm not thinking about the future too much and being present. <laughs> do you hope to one day write for other artists and do that kind of co-writer route? Uh, I actually do really like writing. So, you know, some of my songs that aren't really me or I'll never really release because they're not in my lane. Um, I'll for sure want to eventually give to other artists, but they're also your babies too. Like you always write them about something, even if they're not, you know, your lane, they're still your little, your little thingies that are really yeah. important to you and they're hard to give away. <laughs> and, you know, two quick questions and then you're, you're free for me and my compliments. Uh, and the first one is, is there a, an artist whose career blueprint you kind of look at and go, this is how I want things to wind up, understanding that everything can change. I, I, when I ask some people that, they say, oh, Justin Timberlake, because he was able to shred the whole like getting signed young thing into becoming a real artist and entrepreneur and actor. Do you have anyone like that? Yeah, I think that's, J Justin Timberlake would actually be a great example of that, especially because his dancing is, you know, such a big part of his performances and I really admire that. 
Um, that's the same as like J Lo. You know, she grew up and then she did everything. She sang, she danced, she acts. Like she did the whole package. And I feel like at her like growing up, she's really hit all the steps. And that's kind of like what I want to accomplish. Is you want to do, you want to try everything and um, not just limit yourself to one thing. Right, yeah. you're doing it. As <laughs> simple as that, and you're doing it without being on a living color or, or <laughs> choreography or that kind of thing for other people. Yeah. Exactly. So my closing question, any last words for the kids? For the kids? For the um, kids. I would say just don't second guess yourself and trust your gut. I think no matter how many people try to skew your opinion and tell you what's right and what's wrong, you have to trust your instinct on things because it's always going to be um, the thing that wins at the end of the day. It's going to be the thing that you that you love at the end of the day. And if you don't like it, no one else is going to like it. So <laughs> that's that's what I think is, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's all it's all whether what you love, what you do and you love what you release. And um, that's why you got to always trust yourself and not think about what anyone else is thinking. And as I said up front, it's so great that you did things yourself. You've got this great career that you built yourself. No one told you to write a song. You just did it yourself. You put it out there. People started paying attention. And wow, congratulations on everything. You deserve it. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice and talking to you. My pleasure and hope to see you live in New York when things get normalish again. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great rest of the day. Outro cast.